the Colfax wood shop and mill. Um, I got a new embroidery machine from a grant to encourage more women in uh, woodworking and CNC manufacturing. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to embroider. So this is a Janome embroidery machine. You can see my jacket right there. I have that chainsaw embroidered in it. I think I'm gonna embroider a lot of my stuff with that chainsaw. I just like it. It's cool. It's Material. This is actually identical to CNC. You really kind of start with what tool you're using, what tooling you're using. On the embroidery, it would be threads. Uh, what materials you're cutting. In embroidery, it's going to be cloth. What I have here is a shirt. This is a, a shirt I just bought from Bone Bears, I think for six bucks or seven bucks. Really pretty inexpensive. Uh, it is kind of heavy duty cotton, which is nice. Um, and then, then I'm going to kind of figure out where I'm going to call my origin and then where I want my artwork to go. So all of it's very similar to doing CNC woodworking. A good way to do this is actually put it on and then take a pin and then put a pin where you want that logo to go. So I'm going to embroider the chainsaw on this shirt. I'm going to do it on the upper right hand pocket, maybe right here. I'll just put a pin in there. I can put the shirt on and see, or I get kind of a feeling of where that's going to lay out there. So that looks pretty good. Actually, maybe, maybe just a teeny bit more this way. I do want to make sure I'm trying to put that pin in horizontally. So I make sure that my art works horizontal as well. So there's where my piece is going to be. My art works going to be. These things right here are called hoops. Uh, and the larger the hoop, the larger you can embroider, but the more material you have to pull back. So this is a grid layout. This grid layout drops in here and lets you know exactly where you are on the computer. This thing is exactly the same thing as the laser cutter. Um, with this grid, it's really very transferable skill set to using the laser cutter. This is a larger hoop. I'm not going to use this hoop, 7.9 by 7.9. For this small little logo, I think it's only maybe three inches long, I'm gonna use my five by five hoop. So that's this hoop here. So this thing's gonna go on the machine. This is right where it hooks into the machine. You don't have to have it centered in the hoop because you're able to move it around on the computer screen. Okay, and I'm gonna pinch my material right in there. <clears throat> and I need a piece of backing material. This stuff isn't really cheap. Um, but it's not too bad. So I think this is big enough. I guess like all materials in shop, um, you just want to teach the students not to waste it. So I think I'm going to do that. I kind of like the way that looks. So this is the bottom of the hoop. I'm going to slide it inside here. I want it tight but not super tight. And then there's this tightening mechanism here. You see that? There's that tightening mechanism there. And I'm going to crank that up, tighten that Tsunami up. Tsunami machine. This is the 500E memory craft. My artwork's on a flash drive uh, and I downloaded it off the internet. You can create your own artwork, but just like CNC, um, the way to get started is using somebody else's program first just to get the swing of how the machines work. So here's a home screen. I'm going to open up a file. So I hit file. In that folder, there's my chainsaw file. I'm going to hit that. It's telling me 5x5 five five hoop. That's good. And that's good. I think I'm ready to go. Down here, it tells me the colors. I know it's that flickering screen. With those colors, it's like gray, orange, black. So I think that's all pretty good. Then my hoop attaches really to the gantry arm. There's my thread, a bobbin. <clears throat> okay, so now I have my hoop arm, my hoop connected to my arm. That's kind of my gantry. 
I'll just use this kind of light colored blue thread here. I like the way that whole thing looks. Uh, I think it's centered, it's flat. I'm really conscientious. I don't ever leave the machine, just like I don't leave the CNC machine, because uh, the cloth will, f will fall under there, and then you got yourselves a, a big old mess. So I think I'm ready to hit start. So I'm going to hit start. It's prompting me to put the presser foot down, and then hit start again. And there it goes. I mean, just like a CNC router, it does all the work for you. It's all done running that gray thread. Uh, and it says raise presser foot. So I'm going to do a thread change. Thread change identical to a tool change on a CNC. Um, tool change is a little bit easier on a CNC. They make um, embroidery machines with automatic thread changers, just like they make tool changers for CNC. You just got to pay for them. Uh, just pull this thread out. And if you get the habits of putting your thread away and staying organized, I'm hoping you'll get the habit of putting the tools away on the CNC and staying organized. So this is orange. It's a Janome specific color, orange 273. Um, very different than the CNC. You kind of use whatever color you want. On the CNC, you should really use a tool that's designated. I'm just loading the machine here, over, up, and around, up, down. So my feed rate on this project, I think, I think it's 600 stitches per minute. Uh, actually looks like a pretty good feed rate. You do have to have some good eyes for this, or good glasses. Then I've done my tool change, so now I just hit start. I do want to keep an eye on it. My next thread, the thread will be black. All the mistakes I've made in CNC wood manufacturing have really been the same ones I've made on this. Uh, some of the bigger mistakes I've made on this, I've walked away from the machine. This material has fallen down underneath and then it sews it all together. And then it's twice as much time to try and sort it out than just make a whole new one. Broken a lot of bits on the CNC. Broken a few needles here. Um, you know, just attention to detail, understanding how the tools work, kind of the key to this and the CNC bow. The other thing that I like about this as an intro to CNC is that there's no Z axis. So you, you understand, you know, it's an idea to understand how a computer is programmed to run a certain X, Y pattern, you know? It, I mean, really within a day, you kind of get an overview of how, how all this stuff's supposed to work. All right, black threads in, hit start, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Uh oh. Black thread. Let's get that for the screen. So, if you read that. So, it tells you the hoop size 5.5 by 5.5, and and the artwork size 3.1 by 1, the three color project, 600 uh, stitches per minute, that's some feed rate, two minutes remaining. Oops, sorry. 600 stitches per minute, two minutes remaining, it's on the auto cycle. Make sure I look at this. Uh, we have a uh, tree work on the weekend, cut the trees down, and then I bring the logs in, and we the students build the logs and the lumber. And then we use that lumber to build wood projects, and then we take those wood projects and we sell them on the web store, treetransformation.com. And I'm just going to put tree transformation underneath it. I noticed the flicker screen. So first thing I did was I 
um, deleted the chainsaw. And then after I deleted the chainsaw here, I go to the home screen. In the home screen, I hit this size right there. Let me X out of that, okay. Go to hoop size, and then I gotta select five and a half by five and a half hoop size. So I got my hoop size selected, and that's that hoop I have here. I'm gonna hit the little house. Home, I'm gonna create letters. You know, it's a smaller hoop, so I'm gonna um, use small letters right there. That's cursive, sometimes hard to see. That's all capital. So I'm just gonna type in the word tree, T. That's back on that screen right there, and that's right where the chainsaw is. So what I wanna do is I wanna use these arrows down. I'm gonna just kinda of keep track of where it is. So I think I'm gonna make it, I don't know what those squares are if they're an inch or two, but it's gonna stop. It'll go up a little bit. So the thing is I'm gonna start the transformation down here in the floor. All done running tree. We'll go back over here. I X'd out. I think I go back to the screen size here. Yep, that's it. Then I hit hoop size. I gotta always default it back to five and a half by five and a half. So that's good. And then I go back to the home letters. Same font style, small, all capitals. Transformate. Hopefully it'll fit on here. Tran. Pretty cool. I love that chainsaw. TreeTransformation.com. Uh, embroidery as a way to kind of introduce mechanized manufacturing. Uh, I love this machine. Students love it. Cool stuff. So then when you're all done embroidering, you undo the hoop. Pops out. Just like in CNC routering, it's really all about fixturing. And then there's a support material on the back right here. And I usually hold this up and then cut it off. Really careful not to cut the jacket, speaking from experience. There it is. Got my hat on because the heat's not on in the classroom on the Saturday. And then there's my jacket with my chainsaw on it. Done. It's a skeleton head from maybe El Dia del Muertes. I don't know how many colors that is. Ten different colors. Super cool shirt. All embroidered right here. It's a river table we made. Let's see what else we have in here. Another project. Uh, this is for the dance club. A lot of different colors. I think it might have got messed up a little bit. And um, that's why the shirt got cut. And then there's a frame. Nice miter joints there, huh? Wow. There's another project over here. Uh, a little hard to see the blue thread on the green. Mechan or bicycle mechanic. Student made that one. So it's a great introduction into working with your hands and machinery and technology. A real attention to detail. The um, thing I like about all these things is that there's always a cost when you screw up. Either it's time or materials. So uh, I love this embroidery in my CNC woodworking program.